All right, let's look at our last example. This is really another kinematics dynamics question that's going to be involving breaking into components again. We have a rope attached to a block that makes an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. When 50 newtons is applied to the block, what is its acceleration? Now here's where you need to do a little bit of thinking. Since that force is being applied at an angle, we look for only the component of that force that's going to cause it to move. Now since this is going to move horizontally, we only want the x component. Had this thing been lifted, then we'd want the y component of that vector. So when you're using the force, we use only the component of the force to actually accelerate that block. If you pulled that thing 50 newtons horizontally, you would get more acceleration than pulling 50 newtons at an angle. If you think about it, when you actually pull an object around, if you actually move it horizontally and you push horizontally, that's when you find it the easiest to move. It requires the least amount of force. As soon as you start to do that at angles, it starts to become a little bit more force needed to make that object move. Because this is frictionless, I do not have to worry about any coefficient of friction or any opposing force. So all I need to do to figure out its acceleration, well first of all let's list everything we know here. We have an applied force here of 50.0 newtons and this is at an angle of 30 degrees. So I'm going to break that into its x component. I'm just going to label it as force in the x direction and that force in the y direction. What I'm going to want, because this thing moves horizontally, I'm going to eventually want that x component. I also know the mass of the block. It's 10.0 kilograms and I'm looking for its acceleration. So I already know that force equals ma. So if I can find the force, I can find the acceleration. So it's again going back to breaking into components like we did to that 200 newton vector in example 3. So if we want the x component, then what we're going to look for is cosine 30 degrees is going to equal to the x component over the force that's applied at the angle, 50.0 newtons. So the x component then, the horizontal component, will be a little bit less. 50 times the cos of 30 degrees. By the way, 30, 60, and 45, the special triangles or special angles tend to be the common ones used in physics. The x component turns out to be 43.3 newtons. I guess I have to leave it at 43 newtons, rounded, because my paper only has two sig digs with that angle. When I want to calculate the acceleration, since I know that the, there's no opposing force, that means that the net force is my force in the x direction, the only force I have that's causing this acceleration and that's going to be equal to ma. So the acceleration then is going to be equal to my x component now divided by the mass. I just worked that out still keeping the exact value on my calculator divide by 10.0 kilograms and your acceleration in this example divide by 10 should give you 4.33 or 4.3 newtons per kilogram or meters per second squared I notice my answer isn't to the right significant digits. My angle's to only two sig digs. My answer 
should be only to two sig dicks. So we have a slightly less acceleration because only 43 newtons of the 50 is going to actually accelerate the block. The other 7 newtons is actually going to try to lift the block. But the block doesn't lift. It doesn't say it moves up at all. It says it moves along the horizontal in this case. So you find the component. And that's another very important thing that when you read the question, you've got to say to yourself, which direction is this force causing it to move in the X or the Y and find that appropriate component. So there's some practice on working with two-dimensional vectors. If you find this lesson quite difficult, which a lot of students do, don't worry. You're going to get lots of practice throughout Physics 30 practicing two-dimensional vectors. It's not a skill that people have mastered by the time they hit Physics 30, but you have the expectation that you've worked with sine law, cosine law, right triangles, found x and y components at the 20 level. We're going to continue practicing it with our new concepts in 30, and hopefully you get better and better and better as we go through physics 30.